Georgia's uh, Redbird 2014's migration is coming to a close. We've had an interesting morning talking about the future. You gave a presentation about a phenomenally interesting project with a tremendous amount of potential. But like anything else in aviation, the big question is, what's it going to do? Why are you doing it? And finally, when do we get one? <laughs> That's right. Well, it's electric propulsion on a training aircraft. And the key thing is the operating cost benefit of that electric propulsion. We're consuming about one dollar of electricity and that allows us, uh, per, per flight hour, and that allows us the real breakthrough in operating costs. And the point of entry as a trainer is so important to the new students coming in. So what we're really trying to do is provide that paradigm shift in operating costs revitalize general aviation and we have a schedule in the next two to three maybe four years up till now the electric airplane has been elusive as the rotable airplane both obviously have been avidly pursued by some brilliant people what uh, what brings you to the conclusion that the time is now well there's a combination uh, it's not just a single technology it's a combination of technologies the aerodynamics were able to reduce both parasite drag and we have a very efficient wing. We're bringing in the very latest in structural benefits from carbon fiber and structural processes where there's greater efficiency in the structural system. And then of course, in just even the last couple of years, there's been advances in motor and battery and solar technology that al allow us synthesizing those technologies together that allow us for the first time on a purpose-built aircraft that have the potential of practical electric flight. In a trainer, not for all purposes, but initially in the shorter duration, hour, hour and a half sortie of a trainer. Now your prototype vehicle, which has been flying since July, is Sunflower. What are you learning from Sunflower? We felt it was critical to demonstrate the actual technology on a single seat prototype, battery, motor, controller, etc., solar, and it's validating for us what we intend to do on the two-seat aircraft. So tremendous R&D tool, but practical, something you can touch, see, and validate. What kind of economies of scale can we count on in the future based on what we're seeing at the moment? It is interesting. Model aircraft are great pathfinders. We've seen some really cool advances in model aircraft. Of course, UAVs and things like that also. It doesn't scale exactly. Uh, there are structural considerations and aerodynamic considerations, Reynolds numbers and things like that. But uh, the, the point is those pathfinders, as you point out, do indeed show advances in electric motor technology, in battery technology. And in just the last two years, for example, we've gone from 160 watt hours per kilogram to 250 watt hours per kilogram. Motor technology has gone from the size of a watermelon to a stack of pancakes, 22 pounds for the electric motor that we're using. So tremendous advances, not because of our industry, because of advances in other industries that we're able to bring into and apply to aviation. What can we expect from the commercial generation of a Sunflyer training vehicle? There's so much of uh, what the underlying cost of doing business with a, with a trainer that's related to fuel and engine. Mm -hmm. And when you can go from 946 moving parts to a, to a one moving part, very efficient electric motor, when you go from the expense of aviation gasoline to, you know, give or take 10 cents a kilowatt hour or thereabouts, um, the cost of doing business is literally a paradigm shift. Overall, we're reducing the cost that goes onto the student, but we're also increasing the margin. The business can operate as a training entity. So we're improving the viability of the business that is training our next generation pilots while we're attracting new pilots because of the reduced cost. And obviously there's the reduced noise and environmental benefits that go with electric as well. Do you have any idea in mind at this point as to what a vehicle like this might cost an end user? Right now we're targeting that 
thousand dollar range, maybe 180 to 200. Of course, it's preliminary, but we do feel that that's a fairly good anchor point for price point at this time. Where do you go from here? The uh, single seat technology demonstrator is cool. It's uh, demonstrating the propulsion system, motor controller, battery, the solar system, and of course the uh, airfoil is very, very similar on this aircraft. But we really would like to be back here at the Redbird migration with that two-seat trainer configuration next year. Aero TV is brought to you by Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration.